Welcome back! In the previous video I have explained how we can generate a simple dungeon layout and why it is important to use hash sets to save our data and why we are going to store the data in the dungeon data. The object, uh, this is because we can access it easily rather than storing all the logic and all the data in one script. I have also mentioned that our simple dungeon generation script has a, an event on finished room generation because I treat it as a single step in the generation process. This has generated the grid of room tiles as well as the outline of those tiles uh, so that we can have a collider around it. Now that we know this, we can extract the data and for this we are going to use another generation step called room data extractor. So it will be just a separate script and we are going to call a method from this script using this event on finish room generation. This will be called room data extractor dot process rooms. Okay, so let me show you the room data extractor. The idea here is that it will output us the data about the room. So it will give us the corners of the room. It will get us the edges and so on. Let me show you how it works under the hood. So let's uh, edit the script. Okay, so this is the room data extractor script. And again, it has a private dungeon data, dungeon data reference because we store all the data about our procedurally generated dungeon, the props that we place and the enemies in this dungeon data object. Again, this is because it is much easier to share it between those different scripts. We have the private bull show gizmos so that I can show you the extracted data and another event on finished room processing so we can trigger yet another layer of our system using this event without worrying about having a connection to other scripts inside this room data extractor script. In the awake we get the reference to our dungeon data and in the process rooms so the method that is called from the previous event we are going to check if this dungeon data is now there is no point of doing any work because we need this data to process it so again this one method contains the bulk of the code needed for this uh, room generation or the room analysis code what we will do here is have a for each loop that will loop for each room in our dungeon data rooms and we are going to find corners, near wall tiles and inner tiles in this for each loop. We are going to loop for each vector to int tile position in the room floor tiles hash set. Let me explain the concept behind this script before we dive into the code. Okay, so since our rooms are rectangular, I can assume that the inner tiles, so the tiles that are inside of the room have four neighbors so to the right top to the left and to the bottom so this is how i can know that this tile is the inner tile on the other hand the edge tiles upwards do not have the neighbor upwards so this is how i can discover those all those tiles that re represent the tiles near the up wall and the same way i can represent the tiles that are near the left wall the bottom wall or down wall and to the right wall. Now the corners will lack the neighbor up and to the left or others but in this case I can assume that the inner tile has four neighbors so the corner can only have two and this is how I can find those four corners and this is the basically the logic that we are going to code. Now to analyze a more complex a dungeon you could assume that you have the neighbors in eight directions and this way you could get a more accurate results of which tiles represent uh, the corner which are part of the edge uh, and so on so if we jump back to the code we can see that we are looping for each tile position in each room and we assume first that each tile has four neighbors so neighbors count equals four if we know that, and we know that our rooms are rectangular without any holes, we can use a very simple logic have for if statements to check if there is a floor tile in our room floor tiles uh, that is an, on the position tile position plus vector to int up for example or down, right or left. And if it is false, we can add this tile, so tile position, not the, not the position of the neighbor, so add the tile position to our near wall tiles up and again this is a hash set included in our room class and we have 
all those hashes and lists here so that we can add this data to this room instance. Okay, so we do this for the up tiles. So the tiles near the up wall, the near wall tiles down to the right and to the left. In each of those if statements, I am reducing the neighbors count by one. And this allows me to below find the corners because in our simple case, the neighbors count for the corner will be less or equal to two. And this way I can add it to the room corner tiles add tile position. I can do the same with the inner tiles because the inner tile will always have for neighbors and this is what we have found so we can add those to the room inner tiles add tile position and now all we need to do is remove the corner tiles from our near, near wall tiles up down left and right now if you are wondering why this is because we have found when we have created a mock example of our dungeon that some props like those columns would look good only when placed near in the corners but if we leave them to be placed near each other they might look very poorly and hide a lot that is going on in our game this is why we want to extract those corner points and we want to place there those columns for example or other props that would look good there but for example this wheel would look much better in the center of a room rather than in the corner so generally this is what you have extracted from your examples made by hand of what you want to generate and now we can introduce this into your uh, procedural generation layer Okay, so we have placed all this data in our uh, room and basically in our dungeon data. So now what we can do is call our event uh, on finished room processing. So this is another event that allows us to run another layer of our procedural generation. Don't mind this invoke. This is just for me to be able to visualize for you what is going on in our process. And I have this Ontro gizmo selected, you can check it out on GitHub. This allows us to tint the different tiles or basically place a cube uh, on the position of different tiles for me to show you what data we have extracted for the floor positions in the inner tiles, near wall tiles, up, down, right, left, and the corner tiles. So now if I turn on the gizmos, we will see uh, that the different colors represent different types of positions in our rooms. So we have the corners using the magenta, we have the inner tiles uh, painted yellow. Now I'm doing some additional logic to exclude the path, which we do not want to uh, clutter with any obstacles, but basically it is in also included in this area. And different colors represent the different tiles near each of the walls. So up wall, right wall, left wall and the bottom wall. So let me show you what's going on next. As you can see now, all the props were placed on our, uh, in our rooms. So let's take a look at the result before we go into the code behind this. Uh, now, I wanted to mention that, for example, those props in the corners, so those columns that I have mentioned that would look good in the corners, but not in the center or uh, together, two together or multiple together, are now placed only in those corners, but not all in all corners. So the result looks pretty organic. We have those boxes placed near each other and those barrels, which look pretty decent. We have those stone tables placed only near the top wall. And we have all the other props like those uh, bigger props that are a bit more constrained and we want to place them first. They are placed in some points in our room. While their placement could be better, it is still looking pretty decent enough to be a room in a dungeon and there is something going on here. It, those are not empty rooms anymore. And remember that we are going to have this perspective close to one room. So we are not going to notice very much the repeatable patterns of those uh, props being placed, especially that we add some randomness uh, to how we are going to place those uh, groups of crates or other props in our dungeon. So again, we could only do this if we know the different types of positions, different types of tiles in our room after the previous analysis, and we can place those different props depending on their size, and let's see how it is done in the code. So in the project itself, we have finished with this room data extractor script, which had this unfinished room processing uh, event, and I'm calling this prop placer, which has only the, the prop 
placement manager script and it calls on it a specific method. Uh, I think it is called uh, process rooms. So the prop placer script will place those different uh, props in our rooms as a, a game objects. So as you can see, those are separate sprites. Now to be able to specify what type of prop it is, in my prop placer I'm using scriptable objects, I have a list of scriptable objects and as you can see in the inspector here is a barrel group and we have a sprite assigned to it, a prop size to define for example if there is a big item example, the prop size is 2x2, two two. this is probably this wheel thingy in our uh, game and it has some additional uh, properties like those bull flags uh, placement type where we can place it in the corner near wall up down right left or in the inner space of the room as well as we have the quantity the min and max so we can randomize it and we have the group placement so we can place those uh, together now i didn't want to, for the big item example to be placed as a group so i can uncheck it but it had the min and max values as one so it would still place only one of those and not multiple but the barrel group group for example has this place as a group checked and it has two to four objects in a group if we take a look at the script here it is it is called public class prop which extends a scriptable object and we have this create asset menu attribute so we can create it from the create menu in the inspector and we have some headers this prop sprite and so on other parameters here exposed as public variables uh, so that we can easily, for example, filter uh, by those bull flags what type of prop is it and where to place it and we can use other parameters. Again, you can check the script uh, in the GitHub repository. Now, the script called prop placement manager is the one that uses those prop scriptable objects to place objects in our dungeon. And since it is pretty lengthy, I'm going to start explaining it in the next video. If you're enjoying this video and want to learn more about game development in Unity, check out my video courses uh, to learn more. The link will be in the description. I would really appreciate your support. Okay, see you in the next video.